I want you to know that I had a very witty, insightful, brilliant introduction for our next speaker, but he came up to me and said, now nah, I want you to trash that. I want you to just tell them two things about me. That I am a nerd, <laughs> I'm a really classic and, and big nerd, and that Mrs. Newmark, my wife, says that I am not as funny as I think I am. <laughs> when we asked Craig Newmark what he wants, he sold us, I want a trustworthy press, which he calls the immune system of democracy. So please welcome a not so funny nerd, Craig Newmark. Um, folks, the, uh, the nerd stuff is, uh, well, in high school I really did wear a plastic pocket protector. In high school I really did uh, wear thick black glasses taped together, and I had the uh, social skills that go along with the stereotype. That's true even now, I can fake it. I can simulate social skills for as much as 90 minutes. <laughs> After that, uh, we have a problem. But the deal is that in uh, high school also, uh, history class, uh, Mr. Shulsky made a point to help me understand how important the, uh, the press is in a democracy. And then about five years ago, uh, public speaking, I did blurt out that uh, the press is the immune system of democracy. Now I kind of add, uh, add a little something to it, saying a, a trustworthy press is the immune system of democracy. Uh, that's a, uh, a big part of all that I'm uh, saying. An important part is that I come to you as a news consumer. I really leave uh, like how the press should be run, all that, to, the, to news professionals, because I'm not one. As a news consumer, I just want news I can trust. Because you know, what's the point of uh, news that's not trustworthy? You know, I, I really uh, don't want to be bothered with that. I could always turn on uh, Mr. Stewart Although uh, now Mr. Oliver may have found the ideal format uh, for all this, uh, we just caught up, Mrs. Newmark and I just caught up with uh, Sundays last week tonight, and maybe that's the uh, future of trustworthy news, because that's uh, one thing I learned from other history, was that the court gesture is the guy you could trust because he's uh, funny. Like Oscar Wilde said, if you want to tell people the truth, make them laugh, Otherwise, they'll kill you. <laughs> Some years ago, I invested a certain amount in the whole idea of uh, fact-checking. I thought this would be the uh, answer in terms of trustworthy news. Uh, that was a pretty uh, big fail. There is a lot more fact-checking than there uh, used to be. There's a lot of good efforts that I believe in. But when you're going from zero to uh, 10, that's not a hundred percent or close. So that was uh, a, a failure on my part. To my surprise, coming out of nowhere though, was something called the Trust Project. This is an effort from the Markola Center for uh, Applied Ethics coming out of Santa Clara University. And their deal was that there maybe people could do things like coming up with uh, conventions through which a news outlet could articulate their commitment to trustworthy reporting and for accountability there. The deal there is that uh, all we're talking about are codes of ethics and then accountability to those codes of ethics. Now, I realize the reason that we uh, trust more or less doctors and lawyers to be trustworthy is that they do have codes of ethics and that they're to some extent enforceable. The idea is that I regard journalists as professionals who have these uh, codes of trustworthy behavior and maybe uh, some accountability. Um, this suggestion was modified by one of my uh, go-to guys for journalism, this guy, uh, Jeff Jarvis, out of uh, CUNY in, uh, in New York, because he said that, hey, if uh, people are serious, one of the parties to the trust uh, project is Google, a news aggregator, so if news aggregators are uh, serious about this stuff, then 
they can commit. Well, when what they could do is on their, when they're calculating the ranking of news stories, say in Google News, that uh, they could rank stories in part based on the commitment that the underlying news outlet has made. So Google is not telling people what's trustworthy, but if the news outlet has made a commitment to being trustworthy, maybe that should be ranked more highly than articles from, uh, oh, from news outlets who have not made this public commitment to, uh, to trustworthy journalism. Uh, since then, among other things, on Friday in Barcelona, Dave Drummond from Google committed uh, support to the Trust Project. And frankly, I've privately, um, oh, privately contacted at least one other major party regarding their news feed about maybe they should rank uh, these news articles, again, where a commitment to trustworthy behavior has been made. And I have to privately and discreetly uh, contact a few more. On Friday, and even uh, following up on Monday, to my surprise and pleasure, other commitments have been made along these lines. Um, for example, Google uh, raised the issue of this uh, first draft coalition. What that's about is, a, well, is having a network of people who would commit to checking out the trustworthiness of citizen journalism and maybe trying to figure out if video allegedly posted by citizens was for real. You know, I'm an old believer in citizen uh, journalism. Like I greatly respect uh, pioneers there like uh, Dan Gilmore. The trick is, uh, as a technologist, I know that it's not altogether uh, too hard to fake some of this and may become an easy thing to do. But the idea of a uh, network of committed professionals checking on this, you know, that offers me some additional hope for maybe the idea of networks of trusted professionals who could also uh, look at what news outlets did to make sure that when they committed to trustworthy behavior, that they really do uh, follow through on this. The deal is that there's other commitments that were made. Um, there's something called Facebook Newswire. There's now YouTube Newswire, which are using other mechanisms, but similar, to try to make sure that what's being reported as eyewitness news, citizen news, is for real. Right now, the, they're delegating a lot of that to uh, Storyful, which is a news corporation uh, property. Um, remember, I'm not as funny as I think I am. Um, but the, uh, the deal is that now there's some real hope where we could start seeing in a consistent way news that we can trust. And again, me, I'm speaking only as a news consumer. I'm not interested in telling anyone what can be trusted because, you know, you got to defer that to the uh, professionals. I mean, I, what I do is I support, you know, or try to support the professionals doing really good work with a lot of promotion in social media. And in fact, most of what you'll see in my social media is supporting good work by others and posting my bird photos. <laughs> Yesterday, Mrs. Newmark saw what we think is a new species of bird, for us at least, and uh, you can look forward to that. Today, you just saw a juvenile Western scrub jay who seemed to be very proud of his new uh, plumage, a, a young bird, and I'd like to uh, remind people that youth is wasted on the young. <laughs> Other uh, sources of hope, uh, Politico has just posted a manifesto where uh, they use the word trustworthy in a significant way, and it may be my imagination, because like anyone else, I see what I want to see, but a lot of uh, people are starting in news are starting to use the word trustworthy and uh, hopefully uh, meaning it. Again, the devil's in the details. The idea is that how do you decide what's tr trustworthy? How do you follow through on what may be trustworthy or not? Uh, I have to put some uh, skin in the game, but again, supporting the people who are the real professionals. Because sometimes we're gonna see stuff which uh, well, people are swearing that what they're doing is trustworthy. And then you got good people pointing out uh, 
what stuff that may not be so. Uh, John Stewart, uh, in uh, five or so weeks, will have a lot of time on his hands, and perhaps we can suggest something. You know, that's what I got. I'm just standing up, uh, trying to do this minimum uh, that I can do. I don't know where it'll go or how uh, far it can go. All I know are a uh, couple things. One is that brevity is the soul of wit. And the other thing that I know is that a nerd's got to do what a nerd's got to do. 